Hey guys, what's up? It's Pharaoh here, and this is the second part of my Let's Talk Tactics Goliath edition. I received a ton of great uh, feedback and criticism last week, so I chose to take a little bit longer with the video this week and implement some of the uh, input you guys gave me. So I really hope you enjoy this video because uh, it, it includes a bunch of tips from the community that you guys left on my last video, and I really tried to implement those. So um, if sneaking around isn't your thing like my last video depicted and uh, like we're seeing here, this one should have a lot more to add to your repertoire as a Goliath. Um, if you're anything like me, if your experience has been anything like mine, you might have noticed the Hunters have gotten a lot better over the past week or so. They're using more teamwork, more strategy, more utility, all that stuff, and it's a lot harder to win now, so I've had to update my strategy and combat tactics. So, some people recommended that taking uh, two points in Leap Smash is maybe a little redundant and not such a good idea, and I also agree. It was very useful when I was winning a lot of Stage 1 and Stage 2 fights, but that doesn't happen as much anymore, so taking two points isn't necessarily a great idea, so now I just take the one. I put my second point into charge for the extra mobility. I used to use this strategy, and I find it a lot more useful now. Thirdly, I usually take Fire Breath just because it's great for taking out packs of the wildlife, and it's really useful for getting a bunch of hunters when they group up. Now, I also said I really like damage reduction, but somebody gave me the tip that maybe stamina increase, which increases your traversal stamina by 38% uh, at the rank I haven't currently, which is two stars, it gives you a lot of mobility and makes you a lot harder to track down. So that's what I'll be running in these videos, and you can see the difference in style of gameplay. It really gives you a whole different kind of tactic and way of getting around. So let's jump right into it. Now, running through water, you don't leave any tracks, so here I'm going to make use of my uh, leap and my charge to cover as much ground as I can because I'm not leaving any tracks, and this leaves the hunters clueless as to where I went. So I see an opportunity to feed on some wildlife, I leave a few tracks, but I leap back into the water to misdirect them as we talked about last video. And here, I am lucky enough to stumble upon a monster with a buff. Now an early buff can make all the difference, and we'll talk about that later. In this case, it's movement speed, which is perfect, because what we're going for here is not only are we going to misdirect the hunters when we can, but it's going to be a lot less sneaky and a lot more uh, movement oriented, because when the enemy team has something like a daisy on their team, it can be really hard to sneak around. Um, Daisy is like the, the bane of my existence when I'm trying to play a sneak style Goliath. It just is really hard to find any way to get away from her. And um, in this build, you can just purely outrun the enemy team. They cannot catch you very well. You can get away so quickly that it gives you time to evolve safely and still make a clean getaway. So what you're going to be watching here is I'm just going to be running around feeding the hunters never even catch up to me before I'm able to evolve to stage 2, which I don't need to tell you that that is a huge advantage as the monster. Um, I just leap, I charge, I run around, and I finally find a spot to stop and evolve. Now here is a new strategy that I've been using against the hunters because it's been very, very difficult this past week. I put my first three points into rock throw. I do this because I've noticed people are so much more adept at kiting, at positioning, laying mines, traps, and I'm having a real hard time staying near them. So here what you're going to see is me isolating the enemy team's healer. This isn't an ideal fight for me as I have no shield from just evolving, but I did make the choice to evolve near one of the wildlife who is going to aid me in my fight. I also get a heavy amount of damage onto Lazarus before his team even is able to aid him. If I hadn't have caught Lazarus out of position, my immediate focus probably would have been the Trapper, so he would drop the dome and I could get away. However, seeing that I have Lazarus so low, and knowing that they have no other means of healing or reviving, I'm actually pretty confident that I can win this fight early. 
Now that I have Lazarus down, all I have to do is sit on his body and I can deal massive amounts of damage from range due to my three points and rock throw. Once Lazarus is dead, it's as simple as cleaning up the rest of the mess. I make the choice to go after the support. However, this gives the trapper time to revive the assault, which isn't the end of the world because the assault now has a strike. And if I get nothing else out of this fight, at least he's going to have less health. But I land another rock throw and he nearly goes down just from that one hit. And he's right back on his back. Best case scenario, he gets up and he's already got two strikes. Now, again, the rock throw is gonna come up huge. The cooldown is so short and he gets the support up, but guess what? He goes down and I get a pounce off on the support again. And that's GG, that's simple. So what do we learn from this? Know when to fight and when not to, which means having wildlife on your side or having a member of their team isolated. Also, what target to isolate? You are going to probably face a lot of Lazarus comps where they're going to be laying down mines, traps, and making it very hard for you to catch up to him, but he's the one who needs to go down first. And I find getting an early three points in rock throw is the best way to keep pressure on them when they run and try to kite you. Here's another game depicting how useful the traversal stamina perk coupled with charge is. Now you're gonna see here soon I'm gonna get hit with a tracking dart. As we know a tracking dart is going to make sne uh, sneaking useless and irrelevant because they're gonna be able to see where you are. It's very difficult to shake the enemy team once they've landed a tracking dart on you. But you'll notice, with a quick two leaps, this hunter you hear completely whiffs his dome. Now, I know that if I want to fight, they have no way of stopping me from escaping. So it basically gives me the upper hand. So as we mentioned, knowing when to fight is very important. Right now, I am stage two and I have full shield and I see that their trapper has overextended and he has no dome. This is the perfect time for me to exercise my advantage. I can get some free damage on the trapper before the rest of the team catches up. And I actually even in-cap it. Now, I know there's a Lazarus there somewhere. All I can really do is make sure that he gets killed so the Lazarus is forced to use the gauntlet to revive him. The Lazarus then, I know, will have blown his cloak and I'll be free to stick on him and kill him. Had the hunters not rushed this fight and set it up the right way, what they should have done is laid mines, let the Lazarus sit in the middle of them, and made me chase through them and take a lot of damage and punish me for trying to stick on their healer. However, that didn't happen, so in this case, they are now panicking as I'm destroying their only hope at survival. I made a mistake by letting Lazarus revive the trapper, but the hunters have not even gotten through my shield yet, so I choose to stick around and fight some more. The Lazarus cloaks again, and I'm fairly confident I took him out with my flame breath. You can see here how I make use of my charge to hit multiple hunters and displace them. Now, I sit between them and Lazarus. At this point, all I have to do is keep them from reviving him, and I can end the match with a well-placed rock throw. See ya! So that's all fine and dandy for when things go your way. Sometimes they just don't. Sometimes you get caught when you didn't mean to, right after you evolved and you have no shield, or sometimes the hunters just play really well and they're hard to beat. So what do you do in those circumstances? Well, this game is a perfect example of how you can turn things around by knowing when to fight. So in this instance, I get a little careless and I get caught eating and I didn't notice that there was a trapper near me. He gets me caught in the dome, and I am stage one, and even though I'm full shield, I really don't want to fight. So in this case, avoidance is my best option. You'd be amazed at how long you can sit in a corner with the team too afraid to come venture into your lair. When you're trapped as the monster, time is on your side. The longer you can delay the hunters from doing damage to you, the less damage they can get done, and the sooner you can flee. As you can see here, I make it out losing little more than my shield, which means I can replenish that, and no harm, no foul. Oh crap, they've caught me again. So, I was very unlucky, and they caught me again at stage one. Now I'm in trouble. 
So I have two options. I need to get Lazarus down so he can't revive his teammates, because otherwise incapping them does me no good. Except if I'm to focus the Trapper. If I can get the Trapper down, his dome goes down with him and I can flee. Right now, I'm in no position to fight this team. They're too strong and I'm too weak. So Lazarus is already cloaked and is running off somewhere, and I'm able to get a good incap on the Hunter. Remember, Lazarus's strength is in reviving, not in keeping people alive. So when he cloaks and runs away, usually you have a little bit of time to focus someone down. This might not get you a lot in the long run, but it can save your life and give you time to run and evolve. We talked about avoiding, but also knowing when to run can make or break a game. In a lot of cases, it's best just to get an in cap and to run. With the Lazarus on the team, he can basically nullify the effect of in caps, which makes it hard if you can't kill all of their team in one fell swoop, or at least bring the Lazarus down first. Here, after being trapped and being spanked quite heavily, I make it out alive, just barely, but that gives me enough time to run and feed and evolve. And in case you didn't know, evolving does replenish a little bit of your health. Also, another note, your health is always at least as as high as your shield is. So keeping your shield up is paramount because your shield can be replenished where your health cannot, unless you're lucky enough to get a buff from the wildlife. Praise Jesus, I'm alive and I made it to stage three. Now I have the hunters hot on my trail and I need to get fed up fast. We're gonna speed through this part, but I did wanna leave it in just to illustrate how being so incredibly mobile can save your life and how eating and running is an incredibly effective tactic and strategy to use, especially against comps like this. You can see here, I feed, I get my shields up, and I even evade a dome from the trapper. I decide that I'm not gonna win a fight 4v1. I need to get a pick and I need one now. So I lead them back to the power relay and decide to make them chase me because I know they're confident in their ability to fight me. If I'm going to fight this team and win, I'm gonna to have to do it on my terms. So I run over and I'm right next to a tyrant lurking in the water as well as a crowbill sloth. I decide to hide and wait. If I can get a pick and pounce on one of the hunters, I can probably win the fight. As I mentioned, Lazarus is only good at reviving teammates, not keeping them alive. Luckily, I get the Hunter. I get a heavy amount of damage on him, and I know I'm going to be able to take him out and get the dome down. Now, I finally have the damage to take these guys out, so I'm going to sit on the Trapper's body and try to pull Lazarus out of stealth if I can. Quick note about stealth. If a Hunter goes invisible, you can still sniff and track his footprints, or, which I find more reliable, you can watch for their jetpack thrusters or try to set them on fire with flame breath and the flames will still reveal their position. Lazarus gets away from me here, but I come back and make sure he doesn't get the hunter up. I try to eat the body, but no luck. However, I see Lazarus now, and I know he has no means of escaping. Now is my time to kill him and end this game. As I mentioned before, Rock Throw is a great tool for being able to take out fleeing hunters. And I do just that with Lazarus and knock the support over into the Crowbill Sloth. Now, with my Rock Throw maxed, I can basically just sit on Lazarus' body and deal heavy amounts of damage from range. This makes it almost impossible for the hunters to revive him. And there you have it. So remember, pick your fights. Only fight when it's advantageous to you, like when you're full shields, the hunter misses his dome, or when you can isolate a member of the team and get some damage on them before the fight really starts. Also, don't be afraid to run or evade. If you can't win the fight, there's no point in losing some of your HP. If you're going to fight, be sure you have a target picked and you know you can take him out. Also, make sure to use your flame breath to take out things like mines and traps. Use your rock throw to keep pressure on some of the more distant members of the hunter team and dissuade them from coming any further into the fight. 
Also, use your flame breath and look for jetpack trails when trying to track stealth members of the team. Other things like the medic's heal or the support shield beam can give away their location as well. And as always, pounce, 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 pounce. It can be the difference between you getting a kill or letting them get away. Also, make sure you always try to strategically position yourself near some very hostile wildlife. They'll usually do a ton more damage to the hunters than they will to you. Thank you for watching this installment of Let's Talk Tactics. As always, I really enjoy hearing your comments and feedback, so please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. There will be more on the way soon. See you next time.